Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final countdown. The last hour of qualification for Shoutcraft America Winter brought to you by Ting.com is on its way. There are now 59 minutes remaining for players to qualify for this final American tournament of the year. An online, I wouldn't say invitational, qualificational, what I like to call it, based entirely on their ladder performance. They've had about three weeks to a month to really get themselves into those prime positions on the American ladder in order to get in. Only the top seven, plus the champion of the original Shoutcraft America, My Insanity Kane, will enter this tournament. It will be an eight-man tournament. It's going to be a best of five, single elimination bracket, $5,000 prize pool, contributed by Ting.com on the line. If you want to check out what Ting.com is all about, head over to shoutcraft.ting.com. That is shoutcraft.ting.com in order to check out their phone services. They've got some really great stuff going on. They're actually an American mobile phone carrier, and uh, you can get a discount if you head through that. So thank you very much for supporting the tournament, Ting.com. You have been fantastic to work with so far. Hopefully we'll put on a great event for you on the weekend. If you want to know when that's going live, that is going to be the 7th and the 8th of this month. That being this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. We'll be aiming to start things off in the round of 8, hopefully after Asus Rog Northcon finishes, but it might overlap a little bit with the finals, which is kind of going to suck, but it's round of 8. We don't want to push it too late because then the Europeans can't watch, so you can certainly understand the situation we're in there. For Sunday, we shouldn't be competing with anything, which will be great. So we can go all the way through the day. And I will be co-casting the tournament alongside Greg Adrafields, who, of course, did a fantastic job with the original Shoutcraft America with his analysis and dry snark, which I certainly appreciate. Okay, so what's the situation right now? We have a set of players that are pretty safe. Yeah, very, very safe. And then we've got a bunch of guys that are maybe not so safe. It's getting a little bit scary for them. In particular, Suppy. Suppy right now is the target. Let's have a look at that ladder and see exactly what's going on here. And what, what we're going to be doing as well is we're going to have a look at a couple of streams that are currently live, including Cats and Minigun stream. Minigun being one of the biggest chasers for a spot in this tournament. Okay. X-Split, I hate you so much. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, let's switch. Oh, I, I may have actually changed the hotkeys around, but never mind. Give me a moment. That is just so infuriating. Like, why would you do that to me, Xplit? Why? I think I maybe changed the settings around. There we go. Yes, I changed it to numkeys. Very cool. All right, this is the Grandmaster Ladder in the US right now. Bear in mind, only Americans, Canadians, and pretty much anyone in the continental Americas, that includes South American countries, Mexico, things like that, even the outlying islands, are eligible for this, or players with a green card or equivalent or players with a valid work visa. That means that players like DeMoslem are eligible. So, who is currently eligible? Well, that's Millennium 4GG. He's a Korean living in France. No, he is not eligible. Currently in basically an unbeatable spot right now is Team Asa Scarlet, who briefly fell out of the top eight for a little while, around the time that when she was playing IEM Singapore, but was able to shoot right back up again and is basically untouchable. Also untouchable right now is Major, who did not get to play in Shoutcraft America. He was actually playing for Team 8 over in Korea at that time as a B-teamer. They are now known as Jinna Green Wings. So he had a lot of practice over in Korea. He is considered probably right now to be the best foreign Terran player on the planet. Root Massa. Bit of a surprise. Like He's going to be one of the only guys... Yeah, he really is. He's going to be one of the only players to come back from Shoutcraft America and actually qualify twice. Root Massa did qualify. He didn't do amazingly well in the round of 16. I've got to say he did underperform, but he is right back here with a very strong position that's going to be very difficult to get rid of. Scarecrow, as far as we're aware, is not eligible. Pretty sure that's a Korean player or a Smurf. Huck, he's in there as well. Admittedly, people are chasing him. As you can see right here. So currently we have Scarlet, Major, Massa, Hawk. That's four players. Hitman, bit of a surprising entry. He's played more games than anybody else here. Yeah? Aside from maybe Cats, as you can see here, who he's not, not, hasn't quite caught up with here. He's from Team SYF, sponsored by TTE Sports, as you can see. He's a Protoss player. 
I've been told he's quite all-in-ish, actually. He's got some really powerful all-ins. He all-ins a lot on ladder. Let's see if that actually helps him out in the best-of-five format in the tournament. So he's a bit of an unknown quantity going to this event. The Muslim. These are the danger zones right here. These guys are on the verge of sort of being knocked out, as you can see. So you've got Scarlet Major, Massa, Huck. That's four. Hitman, five. The Muslim, Suppy, and uh, that is it because it doesn't go down all the way to eight because, of course, we have Kane, our champion from the first Shoutcraft America, getting an automatic buy into this tournament. It's the way the Shoutcraft works. We've always done that. We're going to keep doing that. The Muslim and Suppy are the two at the bottom there. Apparently, by the way, Scarecrow is actually a smurf for Huck. So <laughs> just in case Huck really wanted to solidify, you don't get two entries in the bracket, Huck. I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. But he has not broken the rules. He's totally eligible. The Muslim and Suppy are right now in the danger zone. Suppy in particular is the chase target. Minigun is coming up close behind him. I, Minigun with one good win could pass Suppy and knock him out of the qualification. Both of them are going to have to play. And the Muslim might have to too. He's only two points. Only two points ahead of Suppy at this stage. This could change at any time. So right now, the chasers are Cats and Minigun. Cats is going to have a tough job. Xenocide is here as well. We're pretty sure QXE is out of the running at this stage. Puck can't really get there. It's unlikely. So for the last 50 minutes, the guys in the game are Xenocider, Cats, Minigun, Suppy, and possibly even the Muslim. These are the guys who are in contention right now for these two final spots right here. Now, the best place to keep track of everything that's going on is actually the live report thread over on Team Liquid. If you go to tournaments, you'll see Ting.com sponsors Shoutcraft America. It's being updated by Green Dots, who is doing a phenomenal job of keeping track of this ladder. The ladder is changing all the time. And there are great players also playing and streaming. Suppy apparently just beat Cats, by the way. Just getting a live result in there. We should be able to actually reset the ladder. Yeah, I know. I'm silver. I'm sorry, guys. I, I didn't ladder for like three months. I placed in silver and I hadn't played since. I'm going to get back to where I was, I promise. That puts Suppy there. That knocks Cats all the way down here. Apparently, that hasn't updated because that should have given Suppy points to put him ahead of the Muslim. So, that's something that may not have updated as of yet. But I've been told that Suppy just beat Cats. So, that's a pretty big deal. But Minigun is still hot on the heels of these two. This is where the fighting is happening. There's so few points in it. Hitman could even get knocked out. Huck right now is pretty safe, but not that safe. He may have to play another couple of games. But it's a risk. It's a real risk to do that. Because if you do play a game and you lose, you put yourself in an even worse position. The only guys who are really safe right now are these three. Scarlet, Major, and Massa. It's going to be very hard to knock them out. But everyone else, well, this is still fair game. Cats and Xenocida are chasing. They're very far behind in terms of points. It would be very hard for Xenocida to get up that high. Gotta say. But it's crazy. Absolutely crazy right now. Can I say... Minigun is he's getting there. He is getting there. Apparently, Cats just beat Suppy. Hang on. I, I've been told something different. We're going to go check the streams out, I think. That sounds like a good idea. So if you just give me a moment. I will switch it over. We're going to also have a look at the live report thread as we go. With 50 minutes remaining here on the qualification. Cats, in fact, did beat Suppy. And I think they're playing again by the looks of it, according to the thread at this stage. Let's go watch. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, Cats did beat Suppy. All right, cool. We're going to have a look at it. So I'm going to bring up Cat's stream. I assume Suppy is not streaming. So we're going to bring up Cat's stream. We're going to watch him. See how this one goes. Hoping this doesn't lag. <laughs> that would be nice. Please work the way that it's supposed to. Apparently, he's not playing right now. So, I, yeah, I guess he did just win. All right. We're going to have a look, quick look at the ladder then. See what we can find. Apparently, Minigun is tactically searching for opponents. So, I've been told. Let's have another look at the ladder and see if it updated. Because if Cats just beat Suppy, that could put Suppy in a really dangerous position here. Well, it's not reflected on the ladder yet, which is pretty annoying. You'd think that would update, actually. It's really confusing. If you look at this right now, you'll note that Cats beating Suppy should have knocked Suppy down in points, but it hasn't. As you can see, Suppy was on 1174 before, so it's a little confusing that this ladder is not updating quickly enough. I'm going to try SC2 ranks and see if they update any quicker. Oh man, this is getting tense. 
It's getting re really tense. So I'm going to go find a player who's playing, and we'll see if we can commentate from their stream, see what's going on. All right, Katz is in game. Katz is against Suppy. He's against Suppy right now, yet again. I'm very curious to know exactly... We really don't need the... Yeah, let's get some old music, something a bit more appropriate. Let's put some Killer Instinct on again. There we go. Very lovely. Ah, apparently Suppy might have had bonus pool. Interesting. I'd be surprised. They were laddering really hard right now. Current separation put, still puts Suppy as the target right now. I am checking the ladder on the website right now, which is apparently updated more. Suppy's below the Muslim. Cats? I guess Suppy didn't lose anything from that. That is possible. I mean, it's possible not to lose any points. So, it looks like Katz is gaining rapidly. Minigun coming up behind him as well. Suppy lost points from his bonus pool. So, there you go. Alright. Watching Katz versus Suppy right now. I'm gonna... I will attempt to cast off of Katz's view here. That's gonna be pretty difficult, but I'll do my best. So, you're gonna have to forgive the visual fidelity here. We need to switch over to... Stream capture window. There we go. Okay, cool. Alright. So, we can close that. Katz versus Suppy. This could be a nasty decider. This could get really, really scary. Alright, so that's a hatch before spawning pool right there. No gas taken for cats as of yet. This is pretty intense for these guys. Like, this could very much decide it. If Suppy loses again, he's in real risk of losing that spot. Demuslim's only a couple points behind as well. I really hope Demuslim gets back on ladder. If he thought his spot was safe, he is wrong. It is not safe whatsoever right now. So right now, the real runs, I think, have got to be Cats, Minigun. It's really pretty much Cats and Minigun, Suppy and Demuslim are in it right now. Also, big shout out to Puck, by the way, who unfortunately, it looks like he will not be making his way in. Puck did a phenomenal job in Shoutcraft America Season 1. He was, I believe, round of four? He played phenomenally well. Unfortunately, he did not quite make it. Didn't quite have enough points to get there. Hey, it was tough this time around. We only invited seven people instead of the 16 that we had previously. So it was a lot harder to get into. The competition was fierce because you had Huck, you had Scarlet, and Major all competing, which has left us with a phenomenal lineup. This tournament is going to be killer. I'm really excited about this. All right. So, Suppy versus Cats going on right now, and Zerg versus Zerg. A little bit of an engagement going on right there. Ooh, sneaky micro trickery from both, actually, which actually leaves Suppy with the slight edge on that one. Cat, Cat's going for the interception, gets one, but he doesn't actually take it out, unfortunately. Cat, casting for a player perspective is very difficult. Uh, we'll try it. Get a, a nice appreciation for what these guys actually do. It's incredible seeing how fast they play as well. I know we've had a few guys actually tune in to streams today. They don't really watch StarCraft anymore. It's like, what's going on? It's so fast. It's like, yes, it is. Yes, it is so fast. It's goddamn great, isn't it? Watch more StarCraft. It's, it's like watching 10 games of chess on crack. It's wonderful. Is that a Baneling Nest going up right there? I wonder if that's a front Baneling Nest or it's a Spine Crawler. Because we see the Baneling Nest going up the front here for Cats, which is more of a defensive play more so than anything else. It wants to try and fight up that ramp right here. Oh, man. Ooh, what, was, what is, what did he just put down? I want observer mode. Why can't I spectate this damn thing? It would be actually really nice if we had, I suppose, a riot style way of doing that and have maybe a five, 10 minute delay. That would be pretty cool. I assume that's gotta be a roach warrant. I mean, that's the only thing of the right size here. Bailing nest and roach warrant at the front. Wow, that's pretty aggro, I gotta say. He doesn't have a huge amount of gas going for him right now. He's taking, he's taking both his gas, okay. No, it's an ever champion. What am I talking about? This is hard, guys. I'm sorry. I was going to say, he's only got one gas. There's no way he's dropping down a Roach Warren. That's not going to happen for him. A couple of aggressive links. Speed is actually available for both sides right now. Attempted interception. Good scout there by Suppy. Seems to be getting... He's not stringing that many links across. Looks like both might actually end up taking their third base. Neither of them going super aggressive at the moment. Especially with that evolution chamber up. It's not that likely that Katz wants to get aggressive. He's got to be the defender at this point. But that's assuming Suppy even wants to go for it. Dance the overlords in the center of the map right there to see what they can see. 
Apparently, Demoslem is online, according to Huck. He is ready. He is making... T he's being very tactical. Because, really, it is. If you lose... If you decide to ladder and you lose, as we saw with the previous Shoutcraft America, you can lose your spot and you can never get it back. It is that tense. In goes the aggressive run by here by Katz. A nice one as well. He's hidden away two banelings in the corner there. That does not been spotted as of yet. He even chases those lanes away from it. That is a nice little play indeed. A couple of banelings come out here. This could actually decide this game. If he gets two good connections with this, that could be an absolute disaster here for Suppy. Got Link Skirmish going on in the middle of the map right here. They all attempt to do a run by defensive banelings being morphed in at the ramp. In they come. Interception. He's found them though. Will he be able to make his way to the mineral line with those banelings? One goes off. Second one detonates. It will not do much. It takes that one drone. Bunch of damage on otherwise not too bad but not too great he wanted to get both in there that would have been a big deal giving him a major economic advantage interestingly enough is something not taking a third base i guess not did do we see a cancel there from sorry this is a very small mini map it's difficult for me to see no yeah it, it, the cats did take a third ah there is a third coming up it's just a lot later there for suppy suppy i thought with a slight unit advantage but evidently not cats is in a pretty good spot right now a lot of banelings, though, from Suppy. Looking for a cancellation on the third base. See if he can actually get it. He does get the successful cancellation. He needs to be very, very careful with the engagement right here. And there is the lag. Thanks, Twitch. That's that's very much appreciated. <laughs> Come on, Twitch. Move. Just, just poke it. Poke it. Oh, I'm going I'm to switch this down to high, guys, because apparently Twitch can't do its job as usual. Uh, this, you know, this is why I don't want GOM on Twitch TV. I'm sorry, like, Twitch is a good alternative, but it's not a great choice for everything, for, like, major tournaments. I'm looking for a way to syndicate, actually, for future events, because Twitch has done a lot of good things for me in the past, but honestly, it's it's not reliably enough at this stage. All right, huge run by coming in right here from Katz. Really trying to do as much damage as he can. Bailing detonation goes up, but that third is up for Katz. He hasn't been able to do anything with it yet, but it does give him that lava advantage if it continues to be a Ling Baneling war. Most of the banelings, I think, were negated at this point. There's a big swell of lanes coming across, though. He needs to get some banelings up pretty much immediately. That third might end up getting cancelled. Well, not so much cancelled, just killed off immediately. Out come the lanes. I'm not seeing any banelings here from Suppy as of yet. God, I wish he was streaming that. I could actually watch it from there as well. That would be pretty amazing. In comes the engagement right there, which is something that Suppy looks like he is going to win, especially with the banelings coming across, reinforcements coming in as well. Slightly shorter rush distance here for the... Cats Zergling, so they will be able to get a little bit quicker. Wow, Cats with his Banelings coming in right there. A couple of Mutas actually sn snuck out there from Suppy. He made the transition on two bases there. Makes sense considering we saw the four gas up for him. But of course, we are casting from Cats' perspective, so a bit more difficult. Another great run by here by Cats. That's really, really nice. He's keeping Suppy on the defensive, which is awesome considering Suppy just had that bigger, scarier army. Oh, nice interception there by Suppy. Takes out most of the links. That third's still alive, but it's not really doing much. Queen's coming across. It's going to be mostly a uh, macro hatch for the time being here. See if we can get a couple of spines up to actually defend it and really afford that. A lot of queens on the field here for cats as well. Now those banelings will be finally taken out. Another big run by coming in. The mutilists are out. What's the answer to the mutas? Well, spores, obviously. Seems like the best bet here, but... And he's got a decent number of queens, but I don't think he's got enough really to deal with that number of mutas. He goes to the mineral line again, gets most of surrounded and killed off. Mutas come in, looking to try and take out the third base. Does he get the cancellation on the third base? He does not. So Soppy's third base for the moment will be safe. We need to see some spores, I think, from cats quite quickly. The queens might be enough, but spores are just ion cannons these days against mutas. So things are looking pretty good there, I gotta say. Nice, but nice, just everything from Cats right now. He's looking so solid. A lot of, yeah, I think there actually are enough queens. There's like seven or eight queens for Cats here. That's enough to deal with that many mutalisks. Yeah, he's got that. He's got that in the bag. The question is, can he keep doing damage to Suppy? Can he kill that third base? He's done decent damage to it. He may be able to kill it with a run by. Gotta be a little bit careful. Look at that. It's under half health. Uh, that's a possibility here. So he kind of baits the trap, waits for cats to come in again, goes for the big engagement, gets the better end of it for the most part, and then of course the mutas fly over as well. The nice thing about what cats is currently doing is it's keeping those mutas out of the minimal lines and giving them a chance to prepare. Goes for the surround on the hatchery to do a little bit more damage, and then simultaneously runs into the natural as well. Cats is playing a good game right here. Suppy is really having to respond to everything he possibly can. He's not really getting a chance to dictate what's going on, which means more queens, means more spores, and the muta count isn't getting crazy high, although it could. Because not otherwise, I'm not seeing a lot of gas being used by Suppy on anything. So, something to bear in mind there. 
More queens, more creep spread here. Good creep spread between that and the third base as well, so that's going to help against the mutas. Those mutas are just wishing they hadn't been born at this stage. With like 9 or 10 queens on the board here. That is pretty crazy. We'll, of course, be having a look at the ladder rankings after this game is concluded. Because this, this is a big deciding game here. If Suppy doesn't have bonus pool and ends up losing ladder points, he could fall out of the qualification. And Cats could actually be with, he's, he's in with a real chance here. Of course, there is a minigun game going on right now against Major as well. Which is something that we definitely should check out. I would do that, but I can't trust Twitch to have two streams open simultaneously. So... It might last for longer than that. We'll see. Mass Queen coming out right here from Cats. Obviously, Cats does not want to play a long game because he's still playing catch up. He needs to win a couple more. The longer a game he plays, the worse this is actually going to get for him. So, we really don't want to see that from Cats. He has loads of queens, but they're generally not conducive to killing stuff. They're only really good for defense. He might just go march with the queens across the map here, but he's dealing with his muters right now that are menacing his third base. Cats, I think, with a well, pretty significant economic advantage here. There's the Zerg Ion Cannon firing. Goes in for it. That's a quick morph. A nice one as well. Transfuse on the drone. Sick play here from Cats. Very nice. Mining six gas. What's he going to do with it, though? What, what's his tech here? He's building a lot of queens. He's mining six gas, but I'm not really sure what he's doing with it. He's banked up a lot. He's got a roach one coming up. So does he just flood roaches and try and kill him at that point? It's probably not a bad idea. And there's no spire here by looks of it for Cats, unless I'm actually missing it. Even that mining so much gas for roaches is a little strange. I wonder how much he can really bank up and just what kind of swell of roaches he can really go for. Those queens and that nice iron cannon and macro hatch comes up there. Maybe we just see that massive roach swell to try and kill him off. That would be pretty crazy. Queens are continuing to push creep forward here. Suppy does have now an unmolested third base. Hydras are on the field as well here for cats. So big roach hydra push would probably help out. That explains all the gas as well. I was thinking, oh, really? So just going to go for roaches on six gas? That doesn't make a lot of sense. But yeah, with hydras, that absolutely does. What can I say, folks? Without a building tab, it's a little bit more difficult to keep track of what he's doing. Hmm. What is Suppy doing behind this, though? Like, what's the transition for Suppy, if at all? Is he going to keep trying to push muters and get the critical mass? It's potentially risky, especially if infestors come out here from cats. But we will see. As the upgrades coming off the ranged weapons. Roach Hydra Queen is a very powerful army. I know, he's sitting pretty on three bases and making that work as well. He's spent a lot of gas on upgrades, a lot of gas on Hydralisks. And then once he does that, he can go with the Macro Hatch for a big swell of roaches and just go for this big push. Seems like a good idea. I'm fairly sure a roach speed is done now. So that should help. I'm not sure if he built Muscular Augment. Sorry, Cats is moving too fast for me to keep track of right here. Another queen transfuse. That queen never dies. Absolutely not. March of the Queen's coming on right there. He's going for it. He's got some Banelings in there. He's got a lot of Hydras. He could reinforce with Roaches across the map as well, which is probably his best course of action after that. Can Suppy resist this? Like, because most of Suppy's army has got to be in Mutas at this point, which is going to be useless against that many Queens. How many Queens does he have? It's an absurd number. Really, really high. Ah, Mass Spine coming out here as a defensive measure. Interesting idea. Hydras come into play. The Queens will be able to tank nicely against that, though, and the Transfusers should keep them alive, so those Spines will not last that long. I have a feeling Cats is going to take this one. Let's see the army come in. Lings, Banelings crashing into the Roach line. That is... The broken through as well, and a good detonation comes across here. Suppy invested a lot to make that happen. The Queens are still up. I don't think this is enough. Suppy's getting pushed back here. March of the Queens inexorably goes on. More roaches being reinforced from the back here. Great transfusers once again. Not that many mutilists left in the air. Investors actually being deployed here. But of course, roaches don't really care too much about fungal. They can live through that no problem whatsoever. They bathe in that stuff on a regular basis. Missed fungal there with from an increasingly desperate suppy by the looks of it. The Queens will not stop. The Queens will never die. Reinforcements stream across the map right here for Cats as he continues with this big push. The roaches trying to do their best against his Queens, but they will not die. Loads of transfuse energy available here. This is desperate. Infested Terrans have now come down here for Suppy. Can Cats actually break it? Does he have the firepower? I think he does. With those roaches, absolutely. Suppy's in a lot of trouble. GG, ladies and gentlemen. Cats takes it. Oh, man. Where is the ladder now? Where is the ladder now? We've got to find that out. That is... This is madness. I think Suppy might be in trouble here. All right, I've got to find out who is doing what, basically. Minigun versus Major, I believe, is still going on. 
Suppy, by the looks of it, may have lost the rest of his bonus pool. That did give Cats an update. Let's have a look on the ladder. Let's see what information we can gather here. All right, Grandmaster Ladder. Uh-oh. Oh, this is huge for Suppy. Suppy just lost the rest of his bonus pool and fell below Cats and Minigun. That happened. Suppy is in big trouble now. He's going to have to fight his way back here. Right now, here's what it looks like. Qualifications are Scarlet, Major, Massa, Huck, Hitman, Demuslim, Cats. With Minigun chasing close behind. Suppy is currently... He's not out of the running yet. He can win another game and be right back in it. These are the guys we're looking at. Demuslim is still okay, but if Cats wins another game, he could pass him. Scarlet, Major, Massa, Huck, Hitman, Demuslim, Cats. And then, of course, Kane as champion of Shoutcraft America Season 1. Let's go and have a look at Minigun Stream, folks. Let's go and have a look at that. This is getting crazy. Very intense from all of these guys at this point. Really cool to see. God, I wish I could do this every month. To be fair, though, that's what Blizzard is doing with WCS. Those wild card things might actually really help here. Suppy's in a lot of trouble, man. Cats is in. He is currently in. Okay, let's see what we have to see here from Minigun. Cats is back in another game. I'm not sure he's playing, though. I actually missed that. Who's he playing now? Is he playing Suppy again? I think he's playing Suppy again. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to go and see if we can see what Minigun's doing, because I know he's streaming. I think he's still in the game with Major. Let's check if that's the case. All right. Where is he? M Minigun. Okay. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Minigun is very much in game here. This is, this is going on. It's going to up the quality here, and we're going to try and commentate the rest of Minigun's game. All right, cool. Sweet. Hang on a minute. I'm going to turn off chat first. There we go. Awesome. T turn it off. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're jumping into a game sort of halfway through here, about 21 minutes in. Four base Protoss actually up against what looks to be a three base Major with Colossus Ball, Stalkers, Templar... Decent amount of Zealots, not a huge amount here. This is looking like Major might get Protoss. I mean, this is a pretty good spot for Chad to be in, and he's almost a 200 supply as well. Trying to secure that fourth base. There doesn't appear to be a fourth for Major, but we can't ob obviously see that on the map. Maybe that Chad hasn't actually crossed the map for quite some time. So that's a possibility there. All right, he's about to be a 200 supply. I wonder what his upgrades are at. That's going to be nigh and impossible to see without an observer mode, I'm afraid. So we're just going to have to kind of guess it. Double forge. Ooh, he starts a couple of upgrades, and he's so quick that I can't see him. I need to be quicker on the draw, got to say. All right, I wonder if he's... I mean, he's going to have to attack with that ball. That's a nasty ball. It's really stalker heavy, actually, which is quite unusual. Uh-oh, big drop on the forges. That's going to die. Does he have a mothership core with him? Those zealots aren't going to do the job. There's no Mothership Core. He's just going to keep on warping units. They're going to die. This is a fantastic drop here by Major. He's already got a one forge. Probably going to take that second. He's going to kill some production here as well. And a Storm comes in. Really nice flank coming in right there. Those units are going to get caught out of position. And Minigun's going to do some good damage here. He could just go for straight base trade. And nice Storm wipes out the majority of that army there. All right. So I think he should be able to clean this up. He did lose that double forge, which is kind of a big deal. He could... <laughs> get a pretty major upgrade deficit against his Terran opponent here. Is he going to go back? He does have a Mothership Core. I thought he was going to recall. I guess not. Or maybe he just finished it and brought it over there. According to someone on Twitter, he's 3-3, but he was up maybe he's upgrading shields. That's a possibility. Well, that's a pretty nasty army. I mean, look at the size of it. That's about six Colossus there with 3-3 plus Storm. I mean, that is the death ball that Terran never want to meet. meet. And that's a, f that's a full base Protoss. It's going to be really hard for Major. I mean, usually a Terran in this position would be in really hard press to come back from it. Very hard to deal with. So I think Minigun might be able to get this one. A couple of observers in there as well. Very, very nice. Going to just head up the ramp. A little bit of a risk. Doesn't want to let those Templar get out of position here. Just being as cautious as he can. Oh, a good win for Minigun, especially against a high-ranked player like Major could actually get him into the running here. Minigun is very, very close to getting Cat, basically knocking his teammate out. So this is getting pretty close. I'm still worried about Demuslim. I hope Demuslim is ready to ladder because if he doesn't, 
then he might end up getting knocked out completely. It could be t three root players in this. Which would be pretty dominant. Oh, nice ghost play by Major. Quick pick off. In come the Vikings. Not That's actually a decent amount of Vikings, come to think about. I was thinking there weren't, but no, that's a good number. I wonder if they're upgraded. Good storms coming in. Most of those Vikings just got ripped to pieces by the storm. If you can land one more good one. Oh, nice. Very nice. So actual Viking damage is fairly minimal. Where were those stalkers he had? There we go. Okay, so he shouldn't lose too many more, but that was a nice little engagement there by Major as well to push that back. Storm flank is coming in. Storm flank. Where's that storm flank? They're coming in from the side. He's going to take huge damage from this. Or maybe he isn't. All right, okay, that, that was a little bit of an odd second storm there from Minigun, but it happens. Blink comes in, and the Terran player is pushed back. It's about 150, is that 130 or 150-odd supply there for the Protoss player? Sorry, I'm casting from a tiny window here. I'd also like to thank our sponsor for this, Ting.com, folks. Go to shoutcraft.ting.com if you happen to be in the US. They might be able to offer you a better deal on your mobile phone. They're a very flexible carrier, so it's something you might want to look at, and they'll give you $25 off because you like StarCraft. So they're great. Thank you very much to them. It's a cool story behind that, actually. Really cool story behind the sponsorship. Basically, a bunch of their marketing guys were given a budget and said, be as creative as possible. And one of them thought it was a really great idea to come up with that. And funnily enough, it's because he knew Axeltoss, or of course, the ex-MLG caster. So Axeltoss really did help get this going. So big thanks to him. He made a lot of this possible. Storm flank coming in from Minigun. Good feedbacks. And that's going to be one dead Terran army. GG Minigun takes it. Very nice. What did that do to him on ladder? Show me the ranking. Show me the ranking. It's in a tiny window. I can't see from here. What are you doing? What are you doing? Where is he? Where is he? He's rank eight by the looks of it. Okay, look, we're going to double check in game here. Make sure that that's the case. Man, this is getting a little crazy. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> this is a bit kind of last minute from me, so let's switch out to this view. There we go. Look at my embarrassing silver ranking. Yes, I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to ladder in December, and then we'll be right back up to where we were. And ladders. Grandmaster. Minigun, you beast. He's gone past Huck. Huck, you might want to get on this ladder. People are chasing you. Demoslem is really close to being out here. Okay. I, is he? Is he out? No, he's not out. He's just the head of cats by five points right now. Okay. Scarlet, Major, Marsa, Minigun, Huck, Hitman, Demuslim. That's the current lineup. Minigun is in. Cats is currently out. Cats is five points behind Demuslim. Let's have a look at some ladder history with these guys. Is Demuslim currently laddering? Pretty important to know that. That was not the right button. Let's try a different button. Match history. When was the last time you played? Yeah, Demosla. Oh, what? oh, no, never mind. That's Elemental Tower Defense. I could point out that Elemental Tower Defense does not count for Shoutcraft America ranking. So that's not a problem. He actually hasn't played. He might be playing right now. Hard to say. I wonder if he is. Do I have him on my list? I don't, actually. So I have no idea if he's playing. Oh, man. Okay. Let's get back to that ladder and have a look at a couple of other players. Because we need to know who's laddering right now. Obviously, these guys are safe. We know these guys are safe. Major takes the loss, but that doesn't really matter that much. He's pretty safe. It's unlikely he's getting knocked out of the top eight. Hitman. Hitman could. If Hitman is not laddering right now, let's find out if he is. Is he laddering? He's not. Hitman could actually get knocked out of this. I wonder if he even knows the tournament's happening. <laughs> I, I actually have never spoken to Hitman, so it's really hard for me to know. QXC just came back online. I don't think he can qualify at this point, but it's cool to see him back online anyway. God, it was hard to watch that, actually. Like, QXC is such a great guy. I fucking love him. But unfortunately, he did have a series of losses, which did force him out of the running, really. Okay, let's... It's really awkward to actually go back and forth here. Okay. So, Katz is obviously laddering. Suppy is in a bad spot right now. Suppy could... I mean, Suppy can get back in, but... It's difficult. Master's probably not going anywhere. Huck may have to ladder again. That's a possibility. Oh, man. All right. Let's take a look at what the uh, Team Liquid Live report thread is currently saying about this. Because this is getting pretty nuts. Here we go. That's looking pretty good. 24 minutes, 20 seconds, folks. Demuslim is now the target. As you can see, he is the guy that's going to get knocked down, and Katz and Suppy are in it right now. Five-point separation. Minigun, 
Was playing against Major. Is he, is he playing against Major again? Wow. That would be a little bit crazy. Demoslem actually needs to play a game. He really does. Because he is in he is in a big, big nasty spot where he could get knocked out. And I know a lot of people really wanted to see Demoslem in this tournament. And he, he's allowed to do that. You know, he could qualify now, but he could end up losing his spot here. Apparently Demoslem is online and waiting. He better play. I know Scarecrow is hook, I'm well aware of that. Okay. Alright, let's go back to streams. If Minigun is playing against Major again, we'll probably have to look at that. But I think we may even have to have a look at Cat stream, because I think that might be, be, be even, the even more important decider here. Okay. This is not really dramatic music. I'm sorry. What, what the hell is this, anyway? I can't even tell you what this is from. It is the config screen from Wave Race 64. The drama! He spats. Demoslem is in game, ladies and gentlemen. Just found that out. Demoslem has queued up for a ladder game. I don't know who he's playing. I assume he's not going to stream it. But he is now in game. Let's pick something a little bit more dramatic. I think we need some Soul Calibur up in this. That's what I'm talking about. Drama begins! Alright. I think Minigun's just camping. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's not going to enter right now. So, we need to be looking at cats. Big decider coming up, I think, on his stream. Let's see what we get. We're just going to play nothing but Soul Calibur music for the next 20 minutes. That's how it's going to be. Is he playing at... He's still playing at Suppy, isn't he? Yeah. This could... Suppy could still be in it if Suppy is able to beat him. But I gotta say, Cats of ZBZ has been looking pretty scary. Alright, here we are. For those wondering, by the way, yes, I'm using Adblock on this browser. Basically because I can't have pop-ups on the stream. I, do, I never use Adblock regularly. That would make me a terrible person. Also, I'm Twitch Turbo because I like people. But there you go. Is unfortunately required when we use footage capture because the ads and the popovers can really get in the way of the viewing experience for people. All right, Suppy. Suppy is looking like he's about to lose base, but investors are on the way. Actually, no, Suppy is absolutely not going to lose that base. He gets the fantastic fungal, great surround, eliminates that attack force there. This battle could be a big decider. If Cats wins this again, Suppy may very well be out completely. It would be very difficult for him to come back from that. Bear in mind, there's not that much time left. 22 minutes remain in this. So, Suppy, like, winning two games after that would be very difficult. You'd have to do two very quick games. Maybe even cheese, because you'd just have to... You'd have to throw it at your opponent and hope that it worked. In comes the run by. Trying to get that cleaned up. Well, there's a lot of enemy units. The, annoyingly enough, this map actually makes it difficult to determine what's an enemy unit and what isn't. But never mind. Oh, nice. Again, nice fungal growth here. Got Suppy playing some nice moves. As you can see. He is certainly fighting a hell of a lot better than he was previously. He's held on to his third base as well. Getting rid of that attack was pretty important. We're seeing a bit of a different style coming out from Cats this time around. Not playing with that Mass Infest style. I like this Queen Snipes, though. Good transfusers here from Suppy, keeping those alive. And the Ling's actually come in for the back. And he can't afford to keep those Roaches together because they will get fungled again. And they just did. So, Suppy is now pushing him back here. It's looking good. Looking very, very good. For Suppy, actually. This could put everything into contention if Katz loses this game. It's going to be scary. I wonder if Minigun's actually decided to get on the ladder again. Another great fungal by Suppy. Katz is in trouble here. Serious trouble. His last defenses are kind of going down. Suppy looking to battle right back in it. I wonder what the scores are going to be after this. I wonder if Katz has a bonus pool. Probably doesn't. So this could be a big loss for either side at this point. And then it will come down to the final game. I'd like to remind people, by the way, that if players are in a game when the deadline ends, that game counts. It counts. So we will consider that as a win. Or a loss, of course. The results of that count, so it's a bit risky. Of course, we'll be trying to keep an eye on De Muslim's progress because he was about to get knocked out and Huck was very close to being knocked out too. Where are we going from here? Well, Cats are still in it. Runby comes in to do some decent damage to the mineral line of Cats. 
An attempted run by on the third base is deflected quite nicely there by the Roaches. Suppy is being left alone, and that's a really dangerous thing. Really dangerous. Also have to remember this time around that red is in fact Suppy, as opposed to blue. Very important. Ooh, gotta watch out with those infestors. Almost at him. It's too spread out now for that to really matter, but Suppy is pushing right back across the map yet again. I wonder if Suppy's taking a fourth. Probably not. Maybe just a three and a macro hatch on this map. It would extend far too far towards his opponent if he did that. All the rest of the stuff is in vision, so that's not going to happen. Roach is coming down there, defle deflecting the Lings. Ling Infesta versus really Roach heavy play. Interesting. Attempted run by here is not blocked off, so some of those are going to get into the minimal line. Not a huge amount, though. It shouldn't do that much damage, but every little counts here. A lot of good run bys coming in. Uh, not a whiffed fungal, but not a great one either. Roach hit squads two whiffed fungals, actually, from Suppy, who just burns the rest of his energy, attempting to throw out some infested Terrans to protect his third base, which was enough. That did the job. Queen's are now going to be able to clean up the remainder of that. Without knowing how many workers Suppy currently has, it's really hard to know how even this is, but right now, Katz is playing a really low supply game. Most of his supply is in drones. He doesn't have that many of them. The rest of it is in roaches, and pretty much nothing but that. Another big ling run by is going to go right into the base. Or, in fact, it isn't. Oh, man. Attempt to try and take that down. A couple of lings coming in. Good transfuse there from Katz, but... I ought to say, uh, Subby is all over the place. He's getting really aggressive. The drone count of cats seems to be falling quite significantly. That third base is barely saturated. Some damage done in the main there. I mean, his natural's looking okay, but I'm a bit worried about this. There's yet another wave coming in here from Subby. It looks like he's gradually beating him down here. This does not look great for cats at this point, I've got to say. And of course, we'll check the ladder after that. I wonder if that will actually keep cats in the running. It might not. That, that loss could actually bury him. Minigun, of course, would be taking the spot there by the looks of it. Cat's trying to defend as best he can, spreading his roaches out to make sure that Fungal isn't going to do too much. But Suppy, it looks like, is just going to keep hitting him with wave after wave after wave. These run buys are proving to be pretty effective. Ling's moving in, lots of them as well. This actually could be the death blow, right? There's so many Ling's and Infestors. I don't see a way of Cat's actually defending this without some kind of miracle play. Great grab with the fungal growth there. Excellent surround coming in here from Suppy as well. Another fantastic fungal. I think Cat's is on the verge of losing this game at this point. Lings get into the mineral line as well. Not much of a mineral line to get into. A couple more fungals go off. The infestor count is just too damn high, I think, here for Suppy. Unless he ends up losing those infestors. There's not really enough roaches to threaten them either. And he's looking to take that third base out. He's got a couple of Lings, and he's got quite a lot of infested Terrans to try and kill out. If he loses that third, that might be it. Supply count very, very low here for Cats. Trying his best to fight into a corner to make sure that he doesn't get a full surround from those Lings, but there's so many. More units are streaming across the map. I think Cats loses this one, honestly. I'm surprised he's still fighting. Yeah, that's the GG. Cats loses. Oh, man. What did that do to the ladder? Is the question. All right, let's find out what that did to the ladder. See what we can see. Okay, here's Grandmaster Ladder right now. Scarlet, Major, Master, Minigun, Hawk, Hitman. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Scarlet, Major, Master, Minigun, Hawk, Hitman, Suppy, actually. Suppy got right back in after winning that one, but he's knocked a Muslim out by a single point. Oh man, EG team kills coming on right here. Suppy is back in by a single point. Hitman is two points away from being knocked down below Suppy and then potentially knocked out. If Hitman doesn't play, he's going to lose his spot. Huck's in big risk. Minigun is in big risk. This is ridiculously close. Is Hitman playing? He's not playing. He hasn't played for two hours. Hitman could be knocked out very, very easily here. Still all to play for in the last 20 minutes. Scarlet Major Master still looking pretty safe. This is the danger zone right here. This is the danger zone. All right. The Muslim we know is currently playing. I assume he hasn't had a result. No. He lost that elemental tower defense. That doesn't count. What's Minigun looking like at this point? Good. Actually, a strong position here for Minigun. Let's see his match history. Two wins. 
Right, that 30 minute ago win against Major, and this one, which was a win against Illusion, actually. Good one, too. And he beat QXC before that. Minigun's in a good spot. Man, I wish I could have seen that game. Yeah, it was a 22 minute game on Belshia Vestige. Very, very good. Minigun is in a strong position. We're gonna go check the live report thread, folks. See what people are actually saying on Team Liquid. And then we'll see if there was another game to watch. It really comes down to whether... Do Muslim could drop out with this match? He really, really could. All right. Let's see what we have. Yep, Suppy wins that one. Suppy's back in. Hitman is... Yeah, the Muslim currently out, which is very much true. That is very much true. Suppy's currently in, but only just. Only just. 13 minutes and 4 seconds remain for qualification. Just a clarification for all the players and the viewers. If you are currently in game, when the midnight hits, that game counts. Win or loss, that game counts. Just bear that in mind. Pretty damn important. We actually, I think, had Vibe qualify after the deadline for Shoutcraft America 1 because of that. The game counts. It's a risk because it could all come down to one game. Okay. Let's find out what else is happening. Katz needs to get into another game, obviously, if he, if he wants to get back in. Unless he's going to give up, which seems unlikely. Losing that, he could still qualify. Depends on whether Suppy plays another game and loses. Depends whether Demoslem loses again. I don't know. Cats lost a lot of points there, though. He is... Let's see. That's pretty brutal. Yeah, he is down to 1159. So there's a big gap between him and Demoslem. If Demoslem loses, and then Cats wins, and Suppy loses... Then he's still got a good shot, but Katz is now in the danger zone. He can maybe play two games at most. If he can crack out one more game right now and then build another, then he'll be okay. It looks like Hook is probably safe as a result because Hitman's kind of buffering him right now, but it's hard to say. Since Hitman isn't playing, I think Hook's probably going to be all right unless we see some craziness between these guys. All right, let's see who's on the stream. Who is playing who right now? We have, oh man, Cats versus an SCA player. This is a clan that actually got in a lot of trouble recently for a lot of drama. Bio Joe is who Cats is currently playing against. We're going to have a quick look as well at Minigun. Want to know what he's doing right now. Those are sort of the two relevant players that are still streaming at this stage. The Muslim, of course, we don't know. We're trying to keep an eye out. We should also, of course, bear in mind that Scarecrow does remain. So I don't think he's in really any danger at this point. Rank 6. Yeah, Minigun is looking good. I think he just won. Yeah, he must have just won, I think. So we're just going to double check that result history for him. See if he just won a game. He may just be... Uh-oh, did the Muslim just win? Let's just double check that for you. I just got to report that Demoslem won his game and shot up to fifth place. Yeah, Minigun hasn't played. He, he's not playing, and I don't blame him because it's too risky for him. Minigun's looking pretty strong right now, so he probably doesn't have to play. Going to Grandmaster Ladder right now, Demoslem is now in sixth place. Sixth place, Demoslem with a nice move. Huck actually on the verge of being knocked out, but... Wow, did... <laughs> Huck is playing on Scarecrow, actually. Which is entirely fine, by the way. That is that is within the rules. He's right up to third place, having just won a game on Scarecrow, by the looks of it. Okay, who beat who? But yeah, that's entirely fine. We didn't really think that anyone would actually have the balls to put two 
players in the top seven and ladder both accounts themselves. So that was a bit of a weird situation for us, but Hook did it. And we have verified the Scarecrow is actually Hook, so don't worry about it. There's no funny business going on there. So Hook's definitely still in the running here. He just won one minute ago on Star Station against Illusion, actually, in 15 minutes. Jeez. Okay, back to the ladder. Who did the Muslim beat? The Muslim actually just fell down to sixth place there. Did Massa just pass him? Looks like it might have. Okay. Who did he win? Who did he win against? The Muslim with a win on Star Station for 16 points against QXC. Ooh. Ouch. 17 minute TBT there. Oh, look at the build order, actually. Cloak Banshee. Also Cloak Banshee. Interesting. Alright. The Muslim's back in it. So what does the lineup currently look like, folks? Well, if we look at the ladder... So we're now counting Scarecrow, because Hook's pretty much gonna fall out of the running here. Here's the thing, for counting, obviously we only count one of Huck's accounts. So, Scarecrow is the one we're currently counting, we're ignoring Huck. So, currently, it is Scarlet, Huck, Major, Marsa, Demuslim, Minigun, and Hitman. Hitman is still in it, on 7th place. Huck RC now no longer counts, because Scarecrow is the higher ranked account. Suppy is 2 points behind Hitman. 2 points. Is Suppy still playing? He won eight minutes ago versus Cats, obviously. We saw that. We don't know if... He must be playing another map, but he's not streaming. So it's hard to say. Can Cats actually come back here? I don't think he can. I think he might be out now. Let's have another look at that ladder. Can he do it? He lost a lot of points. I don't see him coming back. Like, even if he wins this and then wins another, it's unlikely he'll pass Suppy unless Suppy has a big loss. And even if he does, he can't pass Hitman, surely. If Cats got into it, it would be a damn miracle at this point. But Hitman, obviously, is within great risk of losing because he hasn't played a game. Again, we don't even know if Hitman actually knows the tournament is happening. So, he hasn't played for two hours. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Alright. Let's see who's playing who right now. I think it really just comes down to... Yeah, Minigun is probably not going to ladder anymore. The seven minutes remaining... I think it really has to come down to cats, actually. Yep, Suppy and cats are the chasers. Suppy could get back in, but we can't see. We can't see him. He's not streaming. So I need to know whether or not Suppy's getting in. That's. I think that's going to be it, because I don't see cats getting in. So it comes down to this. If Suppy wins another game, he passes Hitman, and then he will qualify. If Cats qualifies, it will be a miracle. I don't see the, I don't see that happening. Not within this amount of time. Like two really good cheeses, maybe, but it's unlikely to happen. I'm gonna check Cats' stream just to see what's happening. Is he playing the same game that he was? Yeah, I mean Cats would have to win. Is that the same game? Yeah, it looks like it is. Cats would basically have to win now and immediately get into another game and then win that. That's the only way that's happening. He has six minutes to win this game and get into another one and then win it. If he doesn't win in six minutes, then that's it. He's not. He has no shot at getting in whatsoever. Really, it now comes down to Suppy. We need to know exactly what's going to happen with Suppy and whether or not he's able to win it. Because if he wins, he passes Hitman, and then we have our top seven lineup. And then I will tell you what the bracket is, folks. Then I will tell you what the bracket is. Oh, Suppy is currently playing Illusion, and it's on Illusion Stream. Sweet. Let's... We can find this out. Where's Illusion Stream? Why is nobody watching Illusion? What the hell's wrong with you? He's awesome. All right. We have Illusion Stream right here. So this is going to be the deciding match. It's got to be. I don't see Cats getting in in five minutes, so this is it. If Suppy beats Illusion and gets two points, he will qualify. If he does not, well, that's how it's going to be. So let's watch it. Here we go. 
Unfortunately, Twitch is letting me down again. So. There we go. Cool. This also means we can check whether or not Illusion Dur throws the game. In which case, yeah, that would, that would absolutely suck. That would be a really difficult thing to deal with. Okay. That nasty little Hellion Reaper push. Let's see if Subby can do it. Third base is going up. That's going to be harassed. Ooh, Queen Heavy style. Nice. That's a good play from Subby. That's a good way of countering that. A good angle for him as well. It means that the Hellions are not getting shots on all of them. Just one. So that works pretty well here for Suppy. That's a nice little defense to begin with. If this ticks over, then the result of this game will count, by the way, guys. Four minutes until qualification time is over. Four minutes. More Hellions coming out. That's a surprise. Oh, he's pushing Marines as well. This is actually a nasty push. I wonder if Suppy's ready for this. He might not be. There's not that many Lings. I don't think he really expects it. Usually this Hellion Marine push is kind of as a harass, but... Sorry, the Hellion Reaper push. But with Marines as well, this could be really powerful. It's also going to take out an Overlord potential supply block there for Suppy. So he better be ready, because this is going to hit pretty damn hard. This is a nasty push here from Illusion. A lot of Queens here. A lot of Queens. Four Queens. Decent angle here, but not great. Good transfuse. Lings have got to come in and get a good surround, but that's going to be very difficult to do here for Suppy. He continues to push forward. A lot of damage done. The Reapers look like they are, for the most part, down. Hellions are still alive. Oh, man. Suppy just lost his defense. I think he could lose here. There's only... There's only Lynx. He's pulling the drone. Suppy's gonna lose by the looks of it. If he queues again and then wins, maybe he can make this happen. I think Suppy's gonna have to GG within the next two minutes and queue again. It's really the only thing he can do, because that push was devastating. Really, really good push from Illusion. Nasty one as well. I'm surprised I don't see more of that. Down goes the last queen. That drone line just got roasted. There's the GG. All right. Okay. How much did Suppy lose from that? He has to queue again immediately in order to get into another game, and he's got to win it, and he's got to win it well. It's the only way that's happening. All right, we're going to go check the ladder. Okay. Grandmaster ranking is as follows right now. Qualifies for Shoutcraft America with a couple of minutes left to go. Scarlet, Huck. Wow, Huck just passed Major. Impressive. Scarlet, Huck, Major, Marsa, Demuslim, Hitman, Minigun. Suppy is out. I think he's done for. There's no way he qualifies from this position. No way. Even one more game, he just lost a bunch of points. I think that's it. Yeah, Hitman won a game. Oh, I didn't see that one coming. Hitman actually played a game. Logged in, played a game. I think Suppy is out. Yep, Suppy is out of the realm of contention. There's no way he can get that many points. So that's going to be it. That is it. Wow, who did Hitman actually win against? I really want to know. He won against... QX... QXC, actually. Oh, man. 9 minutes 12 as well. That must have been a, probably an all-in. Let's have a look at the build, build order. Probe, gateway, gateway, gateway... Twilight Council, Pro, Blink. Yeah, five gate blink. Six gate blink? Is that five? Yeah, five gate, two base blink. Nasty. I think that is actually it then. I don't think Suppy can get in anymore. I'm pretty sure it's impossible. And we are about to tick over to midnight. So this will be it. I know, this is embarrassing. I need to sort this out, but... Grandmaster, Scarlet, Huck, Major, Massa, the Muslim, Hitman, Minigun. Illusion versus Suppy again. It doesn't matter. Even a win won't give me enough points. It's not going to happen, I'm afraid. Unless Suppy still has an amazing bonus pool, which I'm pretty sure he does not. There is no way he is passing Minigun. I assume Minigun isn't playing. Like, if Minigun is playing right now, he is the biggest idiot. It is 12 midnight, ladies and gentlemen. And I think that's it. That wraps it up. Yeah, time is up. There's no way Suppy can qualify from this position. It can't happen. Cats apparently just won a game before time. I'm gonna, I don't think that really makes a difference. Did he queue for another? I need to know if he queued before midnight for another game. 
because it, it would be hilarious if Cass was actually able to get enough points to get in here. I'm going to double check his stream. That would be insane if he managed to pull that off. I'm not sure if that's possible. So Suppy's pretty much out of the running. Mm, nope, I... Yeah, Cats is not in there, I don't think. Not by the looks of it. I'm looking at his stream right now, he's not in-game. He might be in-game, I mean, there could be a delay on this stream, but... It's hard to know. I think, yeah, I think he's... It's too late for him to queue now. So unless Cats has a delay on his stream, then that is it. That we are done, basically. Pretty sure we're done. Too late on the queue, I'm afraid. Did he queue? No, he, it's 12.01. So he wasn't in a game. The game doesn't count. No, the game does not count. So I'm afraid that it, that is it. Even if it did count, I don't think that actually makes a difference. I'm going to have another look at the GM rank. What we basically just saw there, by the way, was a, a character hand a free win to Cats, which is not his fault. But I'm pretty sure that doesn't get him in anyway. I'm going to double check the GM ranking here. No, it doesn't. It's not enough. It's not enough, I'm afraid. So that's it. We have it. We have our top eight. Scarlet, Huck, Major, Marsa, De Muslim, Hitman, Minigun, and Kane. And I am going to tell you what the brackets are. So we didn't want to reveal the brackets to anybody for obvious reasons because we didn't want ladder manipulation to happen. We didn't want to tell you who was seeded where because obviously that would be a terrible idea because then there's the possibility of manipulation. So we didn't tell anyone. What I can now tell you is that it will be based on ladder point seeding Highest versus lowest, with Kane as seed number one as champion of Shoutcraft America. So that is how it's going to happen. So I can now give you your brackets. It will be Kane versus Minigun. Scarlet versus Hitman. Huck versus Demuslim. And Major versus Massa. That will be your round of eight for Shoutcraft America and the EG team kill unfortunately. Kane versus Minigun, Hitman versus Scarlet, Huck versus Demuslim, and Major versus Marsa. That's the way the seeds will work. Highest versus lowest, going all the way up to the top. And that's it, folks. That's your lineup for Shoutcraft America, which begins on the 7th of December. It is going to basically begin... I need to get a confirmation on this from Asus ROG Northcon, but it's going to be beginning around, I think, towards the end of the finals for those guys over there. And it will be running through for the four best of five matches cast by myself and Idra. And then we will be starting things off relatively early on the Sunday. We'll probably be kicking it off, I think, maybe about midday EST. That seems like a good time for everybody for the round of four bronze match and grand finals for Shoutcraft America brought to you by Ting.com. <laughs> Please check out our sponsor, folks. Shoutcraft.ting.com. That is Shoutcraft.ting.com. $25 off a new mobile plan. They'll buy you out of your old plan and things like that. So if you are looking, if you're sick of your old mobile provider in the US, you want a new cell phone provider that's a bit more flexible, Ting.com has sponsored this tournament and they can allow that to happen. So shoutcraft.ting.com, please look into it if you're looking to switch your cell phone provider. Ladies and gentlemen, my name has been Total Biscuit. I will be seeing you on Saturday. It's going to be a freaking fantastic tournament. That was right down to the wire. Congratulations to our qualifiers, Kane, Scarlet, Huck, Major, Marsa, Demoslem, Hitman, and Minigun, who will be joining us on Saturday for the round of eight. I'll see you next time.